The Appalachian Mountains, Hotel Gunter, Princess Restaurant, and the Great Allegheny Passage. These are some of the hallmarks of the quaint Appalachian town of Frostburg. Another landmark that is frequently associated with Frostburg is Bell High School. Throughout its long, storied history, Bell remained a constant in the ever-changing Mountain Maryland region for 138 years. The citizens of Frostburg have a unique history of investing in the education and welfare of future generations. In fact, the very existence of public education in Frostburg is a result of the determination, tenacity, and grit of the townspeople. Given that coal was the cornerstone of the local economy, many of the town's residents relied on it, whether through employment in the mines or via secondary and tertiary economic activities associated with it. Yet, the blue-collar townspeople wanted a better future for their children. They took the initiative to establish a system of education for their descendants, overcoming political and economic barriers in order to see their ideas come to fruition. Bell School was made possible by a land grant by Captain Nelson Bell and his wife Catherine. In 1866, the County Board of Education approved the land proposal, but lacked the sufficient funds needed to build the school, and thus, construction was delayed. Despite this setback, John M. Standish, member of the Board of School Commissioners, was persistent in his endeavor of ensuring that a school would be built in Frostburg. In 1868, Standish was instrumental in securing $3,800 from the Board of Education, allowing construction of the school to begin. Located on Lou Street, now College Avenue, and completed in 1869, Bell School consisted of six rooms and had an enrollment of 372 students. The school's first principal, R.R. R. Sanner, declared that Bell was the first large and suitable school building in Allegheny County. One member of the County Board of Education remarked, In Frostburg, where there was heretofore no schoolhouse, there is now the finest school building in the county. However, as Frostburg's population continually increased throughout the 1870s and 1880s, there was growing demand for a larger school that could accommodate the surging student population. The townspeople made urgent appeals to the Board of Education, and their ideas were realized when construction of a new school began in 1893. Completed in 1894 and officially designated as a high school in 1895, Bell High School occupied the site of the original Bell School and contained 10 classrooms, two assembly rooms, and a library. Meanwhile, Frostburg residents continued to champion public education, this time with the State Normal School No. 2, which would eventually become Frostburg State University. When Maryland Governor Lloyd Lowndes visited Frostburg for the laying of the cornerstone of the Normal School, he remarked on Frostburg's commitment to public education, declaring, No town in this county has a more enlightened public spirit than Frostburg. The population being highly homogeneous, there is a weight, unity, cohesiveness, and the public feeling that is hardly equaled elsewhere in Allegheny County. In matters relating to public school education are the people wide awake and sensitive. By 1904, the teaching force at Bell High School was too small to adequately cover the school's four classes, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. In fact, Bell's faculty consisted of just two teachers. Once again, Frostburg citizens were unified in their determination to obtain the best for their children. Recognizing the need for more classrooms and a larger teaching force, they organized a mass meeting in which about 400 people attended. They voiced concerns about the size of the school and the small faculty. The Board of School Commissioners and the County Commissioners responded, levying $20,000 to erect an addition onto Bell High School consisting of eight classrooms and an assembly hall. The Board's allocation bolstered the school's depleted teaching force, allowed for the expansion of course offerings, and gave rise to new chemistry and physics laboratories. Furthermore, the school library, which was originally located in the school's basement, was moved to a more hidden space on the top floor, a place where it garnered a reputation as a spot where lovers would meet. The library proved a grand trysting place. For the first time in their lives, some of the students with a romance complex found the book stacks a place of interest. Lastly, a school gymnasium was constructed in 1921. Previously, school basketball teams utilized the stage of the Lyric Theater and the dance hall in the Junior Order Park as makeshift basketball courts with the comforts of a single gas stove and freezing dressing room. By the mid-1930s, a recurring issue arose once more. The school was overcrowded. The Frostburg community was in dire need of a new, larger facility. In 1938, the interconnectedness between coal and education in Frostburg manifested itself once more as the Board of Education purchased 16.7 acres of land from the Consolidation Coal Company. Opened in 1941, Bell High School, or New Bell, was built by the Works Progress Administration as part of President Roosevelt's New Deal and educated 1,010 students. Located at 331 East Main Street, it was known for its Art Deco architecture. Just a lot of concrete. Um, truthfully, I thought it was drab looking. 
Um, a lot of people thought it was a prison if you were just riding by on 40 uh, because it was that the paint. Eventually they did brick the front, but that was with white brick that soon turned gray too. Bell's inception was an exciting time for the town, especially for those who were a part of its first graduating classes. Some of the people that I taught with that when I started teaching, uh, who were native from here, were in like the first classes. And so yes, it, it, it had been a big deal to them, but uh, just all the, the fact that there was so much concrete and, you know, of course they spread all kinds of crazy rumors about the fact that there was a swimming pool under the school and always had kids that were trying to find a swimming pool and there was never a pool, you know, but th there was a lot of that kind of silliness that went on. The school's faculty was a laid-back group, which contributed to a light-hearted school atmosphere. We had great times, great times. Uh, I think we hear a lot about teacher morale not being good today. It was, it was I guess it was the same. We had our moments, but uh, we all helped each other a lot. It was fun. Probably more than anything, it was fun. We played tricks on each other. Um, there was just never a dull moment. As the turbulent 60s and 70s rolled around, and the Civil Rights Movement and Vietnam War raged on, counterculture was in full swing at Bell. The 60s and 70s, we did have, you know, it was crazy times. We had uh, student protests, we had students, uh, sometimes they protested just to, uh, because it was the thing to do. Lyndon Johnson's funeral, uh, the day that he was buried, we had about half of the student body walk out and go out on the athletic field and refuse to come in because uh, they should have been off for the president's, former president's funeral. Also, that was the 60s, so there was a lot of money available uh, for our area from the uh, Great Society program of Lyndon Johnson and from the War on Poverty, which targeted Appalachia and the Native American reservations. So we, get, we had some really great programs that were paid for by the government. Some of the county's largest employers closed in the mid-1980s, such as the Selenese factory in 1983 and the Kelly Springfield Tire Plant in 1986. With the loss of these vital manufacturing jobs, Allegheny County experienced economic and population decline. In fact, from 1980 to 1990, the county's population decreased by 7%. As a result, a series of school consolidations ensued. In 1986, Bruce High School in Westernport combined with Valley High School in Lonaconan to form Westmar High School. Moreover, in 2000, Mount Savage High School merged with Bell. Finally, in 2007, Westmar and Bell were consolidated to form Mountain Ridge High School. Consolidations make your school better. Now, Bell was fortunate. Mountain Ridge has been fortunate in the this school, Bell School, was never consolidated into another school. Those schools that had to, Mount Savage, Westmar, that came to join us, uh, Bruce before that, uh, the parents don't like it, the alumni that doesn't like it. Uh, for students, it usually means more opportunity, more athletics, more activities, more academic classes, more academic competition, uh, all things that makes it better. Uh, I've always saw those uh, consolidations is a good thing. Bell sports fields were demolished in order to make way for Mountain Ridge, which was constructed while Bell was still in operation. It was kind of exciting. We were more excited, I think, about the new school and watching the progress of the new school being built um, while we were still in Old Bell. Um, I think most of us thought because Old Bell was so much reinforced concrete and uh, that they just they wouldn't be able to even tear it down. Obviously we were wrong. Uh, much, of, much of the last year, year and a half, in Bell was planning on the move, packing up your stuff, trying to figure out, you know, uh, where we were going uh, and, and where our rooms would be. And of course the other thing that concerned a lot of people was whether or not you would have a job in the new school because those, everybody had to reapply. Uh, because we were consolidating Westmar, and so teachers from Westmar also deserved an opportunity to be in the new school. So we were going to have uh, more teachers than we had places. 
So that was an issue for the faculty. Um, and then over the summer, a lot of the destruction of Old Bell took place. So by the time that school reopened in the fall, the building was pretty much gone. And of course, there were a lot of people that uh, e even in those last weeks of school that they auctioned off some of the uh, items in Old Bells. A lot of it was bought by people just to have memorabilia. Um, you know, some people bought things for practical reasons like tables out of the library or uh, lockers or whatever it was. But I think most people were just interested in having a piece of the school to put in their basement or to put somewhere so that they had the memory. Throughout its history, Bell was a testament to the local community's zealous pursuit of public education and was a mainstay in the region amidst the litany of changes in the surrounding area. From the days of the Industrial Revolution, through World War II, the tumultuous 60s, and the new millennium, Bell maintained its place as an asset for Western Maryland, and its legacy lives on today through Mountain Ridge High School.